So for this is instance, I'm just going to put a dot on the blue line that the system provided. And I'm going to drag this balloon to a different road. So it's I'm pretty much saying, look, I don't want to go up this direction. I'd rather come around on these other roads and I can easily adjust the route by adding a blue um, via point balloon. If you don't want that, you can double click on the balloon. It will remove it and the route goes back to the default route. If I decide I want to go on this side, the route's going to go the way wherever I put it. Now, as you can tell, when I drag the route down here, it's given me this red dotted line. That means I'm not allowed to do this. Either the roads aren't in the system or there's restrictions in the way. There's something that's causing this to not want to route. So you have to make sure you keep pulling it until you get that blue line. Now, if this is the route you want to go, come up here. You'll see where I added the via point and your via points location, and then you'll click route. Okay, at this point, it's going to give me new driving directions and it's going to give me the updated turn by turns for the new route that I chose. Again, if I decide I don't want this, I will remove the balloon. It will go back to the default route, the suggested route. Again, I'll hit the route button. And at this point, it's going to redo my route description and turn by turn directions. Pull up my next example. If at any time you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, one of us can answer them as well as Angie and her team. Or you can raise your hand within the um, call screen and somebody will acknowledge your hand. So this load, we are 16 wide, we're really wide and we are 100 feet, 105 feet long. For this example, I'm going to use the actual address for this location, which is 4415P and H Drive. If you were to put this in the system, it's not going to recognize the ampersand. And it's going to tell you that it's not a valid location. Even though we know this is in this, like it is a location, this is where the address is, the ampersand needs to be typed out. So instead of the and sign, we're going to type out and. And then we'll click Ralph. Okay, so at this point you can see we're not getting a route failure. We are getting the route line. So just be sure if for any address that has that ampersand or and symbol in it that you type out the word and. Another thing I'm going to show while we're here is we're going to do a border crossing. This will do US 93 at Idaho. One thing with the border crossing drop downs is these are all the border crossings that you are allowed to come in on. They are ordered from interstate to US highway to the state routes. And obviously, Laughlin Parkway and Needles Highway do not have a state route number, so they are named for the roads. Okay. Now I'm using US 93 to show you what will happen if there is a restriction in the way blocking your route. I'm getting a route failure. When I look at the screen, I can see that my origin is on a red highlight. All these red highlights in the system means there is a restriction, whether it's a restricted road, a construction width, um, a length restriction. If there's any kind of restriction that your load is not allowed to 
pass through, it will show red on the map. You can always see what the restriction is by clicking the get restriction information radio button and then click on the highlight. At this point, it will show up what restrictions are on this road. This one is an alert, so it is a construction restriction that is a 15 foot width. That means you will not be able to come in on this border crossing and you will have to choose a different location. Do we have any questions so far? For this next permit, we're legal height, 11 foot wide and legal length. And we're going to start at 6650 West Rich, Rich Mar Avenue. And we're going to go to the Idaho border on US 93 again. I'm going to remove this via point so I can show you exactly how to add these in and bypass the green route to get the route I want. Say I'm a um, hauler coming through Vegas, a local in there, and I wanna use city streets instead of using um, the suggested route. So here you can see right away, the route wants to come around and take the loop, the 215, to stay out of downtown Vegas and stay out of this. But I know that I don't want to go on the 215, so I'm going to add a via point on the blue line. I'm going to pull it over to my local road. Now, one thing with the via points, less is more. You only have to move it to where the route will change to go up the road you want it to go. If for some reason it's doing a weird turnaround like this right here, where via point two is, you can zoom in and see that the via point's on the wrong side of the road. So it's the system's trying to come up and wants to turn around to hit that via point and then go back onto the on system road. If you notice this, just zoom in and pull your via point up to the right side of the road until the line goes straight. If I decide I want to go ahead and come over here, I'll just add another via somewhere higher within the route itself. And I'll pull it over to the road that I'm trying to go. So you can see as I moved that via point over, it kept trying to turn around to go back onto the on system. These green highlights are considered on system because they are preferred. They also are um, a more preferred route. So the system automatically wants to keep you on these roads just for safety purposes. So at this point when I come over and it's coming back up on the loop to go around, I don't wanna do that. Can zoom out some. I'm going to take this via point and put it on the road that I want. And you do not have to add via points to every corner and to every road. It's only on the roads that, like at this turn here, if I don't want it to go over Craig and up, I can add the via point here and drag it down. At this point, it will follow the whole road until it gets back up to the interstate. Okay. Once you have all your via points entered, your route looks correct. Like you know that this is the route you want to go. It's not doing anywhere turnarounds. Um, it's not taking any off roads and you know you like it. Go ahead and click route again.
and then your route descriptions updated with the local roads that you're taking. I can show how to add these via points again. So one nifty feature that our system has is I decide, oh wait, this isn't the right route I want for this load. I'm going to clear my route. Then you can change your options. While we're here, we'll go over the different options. Address is obviously where you put your address in. I do have some other examples of this that we'll look at closer. Intersection is when you'll use the intersection of the location that you're going. Your lat long is used for locations that do not have a business address in Google. Border crossings are obviously the border crossings that we have gone over. Military bases. If you're going to a military base, they are listed in this drop down. So you don't have to put the address in here. You can just put the military base name and the system knows where that's at. The same thing goes for mines. We do have a list of mines in here. They are for the most part in alphabetical order. You'll notice this one is out of order for the time being. So if you're looking for that, it'll be at the bottom. Um, if there is a mine in here that you're not finding, it should be in here. You can just let the state know and they will reach out to us where we can get it added. Okay, so the purpose of this, I'm just going to do this border crossing. We'll go I-15 to I-15 because it's an easy route. And there is two ways to add via points in here. So you can do the find on map app option where you click find on map and then you can zoom into any location. And you can put a via point on the map. So if I know for a fact I want to go 574, I can add a via, but doing this, it's going to make sure you zoom in really close because you can't just put random via points anywhere on the map. They want you to make sure you're choosing the right side of the road. Once you have your via point there, you can click done and it will add it here as well as on the map. So there is that option if you'd rather hand click. Otherwise, you can just click on the blue line. So if you pay attention to my pointer hand, when it's flat and it shows the five little fingers like that, you're not going to be able to add a via point. That's not really going to do anything unless I want to get restriction information for road. When it's the pointer finger, that is the point that you can add your via point. So as long as you're close to the blue line here, it will add the via point and then you just drag it. It's just one click to add a via point and then double click to remove it. Okay. So with this one, is there any questions with adding via points? And we'll move on to our next example. Here we're 16 high on this one, so pretty tall. I'm going to add an address for this one. So a zip code is not required as long as you have the address and city in here. Okay, so we're going from 700 Gaslight in Reno to 225 Amsterdam Court in Sparks. Okay, for this one, the destination is not found. It's telling me that Spelling might be wrong. I'm going to look it up in Google 
just to verify. Okay, when I come to this location, I can see here that it doesn't look like there is a business pin. So anytime there's a business pin, it's gonna have the name like this and typically an address associated with it. This one is 2555 Waltham Way. This location here does not have that address pin. So in this instance, we can use a lat long. The state will allow a lat long on this. So we'll change this over, copy and paste our lat long in here. If it's the first time you're doing a copy and paste, you will get a pop-up box up here on the top of your corner that's gonna say allow clipboard to paste. You want to allow that. When you allow that, it does split up your latitude and longitude into the two boxes. And then click route. At this point, you can see that it is now routing to that location. Okay, we're gonna go back here though, but because we're tall, we're over 16 foot tall, we're doing this weird detour here. I don't know what this detour is, so I'm gonna zoom in here, click get information for road, get restriction information for road. With my flat hand, I click on the red line and it's gonna pull up my restrictions. So I can tell I have a bridge height here that is 15.9. The system absolutely will not allow you to go under this bridge if you are over 15 foot 9 inches. Um, if you are exactly 15 foot 9 inches, you can travel, but if you are 15, 10 or higher, you will not be allowed to travel. Um, and that's how it is for every bridge height we have in here. So I know I don't want to take this little detour here. I'd rather come down Sparks Boulevard. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see. I'm going to pull my route. I'm going to bring it here over to Sparks. And now I can see my route is taking this detour that I'd prefer to get around that bridge height. At that point, once I have the road how I want it, again, I would push route. and it's going to give me my updated driving directions. Okay. All right, for this one, I'm gonna use a common address here as well, 7400 USA Parkway and Sparks. See, we're coming in across the border. If I decide I don't wanna go north here, I'd rather cut across the state. I can put my via point here, drag it down, and then it will, if it does the weird turnaround like this, um, it was showing, just keep moving your via point until it goes the route you want to go. We're going to zoom into this destination a little bit. If I don't want to come down, I can add another via point and bring it over on US 50. However, with this address, Google puts the location of 7400 USA Parkway right here where we know that this Google US RNO is the actual 
um, pin. When you click on it, you can see that it says 7400 USA Parkway. But when you look on Google, you can see that that's not an actual building. It's just right here at the turn. So the system is a little um, odd with this address itself. If you want to go to the exact Google R US RNO, you can put the company name in here. Okay, quick route. And with the company name in there, it takes you to the actual intersection. So if for some reason the address isn't routing to the location you think it should be going, try using the company name um, and see if it will populate the route that you desire. One feature I do want to show with this map as well is you can click the Google button down here and it will open up a whole new Google map. Or within the feature within the system, you can click the satellite feature and then you can see the Google satellite layer. This also allows you to drop down and use the little pin man to be able to use Street View. And those are all features within the map within the routing system. Okay, this is a 17 foot tall one. So this is more just to show how the restrictions will populate. Um, I'm going to go back for the purpose of this call and I'm going to change my height to be 15.6. Anytime you change a dimension, whether it's axle weights and spacings, gross vehicle weight, um, height with any kind of dimension. If you change a dimension and go back to the route page, you do have to reroute. This is a safety feature to make sure you are not routing over restrictions that you would now violate. Okay, so for this one, I remove these. Our default route is going to take around the loop because the system automatically wants to keep you from going through the downtown busy traffic. But if you want to take the loop, that's totally, or the I 11, that's totally fine. You can just drag your route over. Because we are 15 at uh, 15, 6 tall, you are allowed to take the interstate all the way up. I'm going to reroute. You can see my driving directions. Keep me on I-11 until I get to US-93. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my height back to 17. Six. I'm going to get the pop-up that says there's been a change. It needs to be rerouted. I'm going to click route. Now our via point did keep us on I-11, but due to these restrictions that I now violate, it is not keeping me on I-11. It is doing my best or its best to keep me from hitting these bridge heights. 
So this is just a display to show that as you change dimensions, um, restrictions will show depending on what those dimensions are. Each permit application um, will be ran for the dimensions of that permit application. So since I can no longer go I-15, and take that via point out of there because it's no longer valid. I cannot reach that via point without overriding restrictions. And the state is the only one that can do anything with restrictions. Heights will not be overridden for obvious reasons. Here you can see again, we're trying to avoid a height restriction here. So I'd probably want to change my route to go city streets through Vegas to avoid all of these red highlights. Okay, so because I removed the via point, I changed the route in the system, the, suggest the route that I wanted to have previously. Before I can leave this page, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna keep the route that I originally had or do I re want to rerun the trip since I've changed it? If you rerun the trip, the system will automatically reroute it and it will give you your updated route line and driving directions. If I were to choose keep, it's gonna keep the original route that I had without any changes that I made. Okay, so for this one, I'm 15 foot tall, 11, three wide and 119 long. We're gonna go from I-15 to I-15. Now this again is one where if you don't wanna take the loop, you can just pull your route over, stay on I-15 the whole way. If I want to go, well, let's do this first. Say I want to stay on I-15, but I want to avoid something here. Just add additional via points and it will route. Another option you have for routing is called via highway. You drop it down here. When you use via highway, you have to list a minimum of three roads. This is really, if you know there is a detour, and I'm gonna show an example here in just a sec, but if there are certain roads that you like to take more than others, you can put those roads in here, but they have to be in order. So you would start in this example. We're gonna go I-15, State Route 168 to US 93. Something to keep in mind that if you do via highways, the system is not gonna recognize two different types of via points. So via highway, it will allow you to put the order of roads that you wanna take, and then it's gonna to go to the default route around. But if I know I also wanna take 15, it's not gonna take both of these because via highways and via points are two different types of vias and the system does not work together with those. So just keep that in mind if you wanna do more than one change, via point is the best option. You can see this is still taking that because it is recognizing this is in here and I do not have a via point on the map. So it's automatically trying to take the via highways. I can clear this, reroute and it will go back to the default route. Are there any questions on that? Not yet, okay. Okay, this next one's gonna focus on intersections a little bit.
Mm, it's going to make me fill something in. Okay. So I'll go ahead and route. And I'm actually, I'm going to clear my route so you guys can see exactly how this works. Okay, so when I click confirm, it clears everything on the routing page. For this, I'm going to go border crossing, I-15, California, to intersection. So for street one, I'm going to use South Torrey Pines and Serene. When you put the road names in here, it is going to find the intersection where those roads cross. In this case, there is only one crossing of these two roads. And then you just click the balloon. Once you click the balloon, it's going to turn either green or red, be an origin or destination balloon, depending on what option you are entering the intersections. But you have to click done. If you do not click done, the system will not retain that intersection. So you have to click the balloon and then you have to click done. At that point, you can click route. And it will route to your location. Okay, like I said, for this one, it was only one intersection, so it was pretty easy to find. We're going to change this um, origin location to a different intersection we're going to find okay i'm going to point something out here with this i have us 95 and us 50. i'm going to click find Zoom in, and it's telling me there are 21 intersections where these two roads combine. This is a roundabout, so each turn lane, ramp lane is going to have its own intersection. And zoom out some more. I can see there's intersections here in um, Fallon and Silver Springs. So I need to figure out which intersection it is I'm going to. These two are regular intersections, and I want to display choosing the intersection on the wrong side of the road, so I'm going to go to a roundabout. One thing you have to be careful of is you don't want to stay zoomed out and just say, okay, I like this, and just click, because it does matter which balloon you pick, because it matters which side of the road you're ending on. So if I'm coming westbound, I know I'm going to want to end on one of these westbound balloons. If I'm going eastbound, same thing. I'm going to want to end on one of these eastbound balloons. I do not want to end if I'm going eastbound on this westbound ramp because it's going to make me go down and do a big turnaround and then come back up to get to this location. So that's why it's very important to zoom in and make sure you're clicking on the right via point. Okay, so this one I'm going to click here. I got my O balloon, I'm going to click done. At this point, the system will put those road names in the intersection up here and I'll click route. And this one is starting going eastbound. So this is good. I know that that's the way I want to go. For display purposes only, I'm going to choose the wrong side of the road to display how that works. Just so you have something to look for if something's not working or the routing looks re off. So I'm going to start on 16. That's the west side, westbound side of the road opposite side of what I want. 
click route. And you can tell it's trying to make, you take that roundabout, which is undesirable if you're starting going eastbound. Okay, so that's just something to keep an eye out for, for intersections. Another thing is, the state, if there is an intersection that's available or an address that's available for the location that is preferred over any other um, entry, specifically lat longs. So we're going to come here and we're going to do West Craig and North Durango. And it's going to pick each of the four locations where these roads intersect. You can click satellite and you can see there is bifurcations here. So there is four different points that these roads do cross. If for some reason you find an intersection and you type the road names in, let's see if I can find another location that. Would work to display this. Um, let's go Reno. Okay, so we're gonna go Sparks Boulevard and oh my goodness, Pyramid Way. All right, so we can tell there's an intersection here. However, it's telling me this intersection cannot be found. So when you're typing these in, try to make sure you don't have an extra space here at the end of the entry. This extra space, when I remove it, allows that intersection to be found. So if for some reason it's just not working for you, check to see if there's an extra space in the um, road name and, tr and try searching it that way without any extra spaces. Okay, so we're gonna do an address, there's another, um, item for me to display. And this is 7400 USA Parkway. It's a common address. All right, so here's my route. I don't want to come up this way, so I'm going to, with my point to your finger, add a viewpoint. Oh, and drag. Okay, and just because you get that red dotted line, just keep moving your viewpoint until you get the blue line. Okay, so I adjusted my route here. I'm going to come up. And it's bringing me across to US 50 and up. However, I don't want to go this way this time. I'd rather take the loop out and around. So when I do this, I notice that it's coming all the way down to Sparks Boulevard to turning around and coming up. But I know there's a ramp here. So I'm going to zoom in here and see why I can't take this ramp. And of course, you haulers that have long loads probably are already aware of this. But I'm going to check the restriction here and it's telling me this ramp has a length of 110 feet. So I'm not going to be able to make that turn coming off the interstate. 
if I wanted to, as a customer, it's going to show you there's this yellow line here. Like if you're good, if you'd like to take this, it's going to say eh, you have a restriction here. This needs to be approved by the state. Most likely the state's going to come back and say you can't take that ramp. This does not mean you are going to get a permit. This just means it's a suggested route, but there's a restriction in the way. So um, keep in mind if you do receive a line that turns yellow, that means you're going over restrictions and those have to be approved. And that does not mean you're going to get that route or a route, um, depending on your origin and destination. Not all red restrictions are able to have the highlight um, go through them like this one did. I'm going to pull this down here just so you can see. I want to bring, my, say, I want to start my destination here on this red highlight. I've got something out here that's going on. So I'm going to start here. Well, I'm getting this red dotted line. That means it's a hard stop on this restriction. I can click on it and this is a no permits. This is telling me there's no permits no matter what. So I'm not going to be able to start or stop at this location. Now, of course, if you have um, something coming in or out of here, you can send it to the state and talk to them. They may be able to work with you, but if you're starting or stopping on a no permits, that is for the most part a hard stop and you will not be able to get a route um, through that location. Are there any questions on that? No. Okay, I did change my route because I've moved that origin or that destination um, around quite a bit. So instead of rerunning it, I'm just going to keep it so I can exit out of this permit. Okay. This permit is going to be an example of split trips. I'm going to show you how to do it from start to finish. Oh. Let me get back in here. It did not like me doing that too fast. Gonna give it a minute to load. I was trying to move too fast for it. It yelled at me. So this is what the final will look like. I'm gonna delete this split. Now we're gonna delete this split. And we're gonna route. So if I know that I'm coming in from California and my first address is 3300 St. Rose Parkway, that's my first leg of the trip. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here so I can get my route. You can see it routes from A to B just fine. But I know I need to come from 3300 St. Rose to another location. So I'm going to add a split trip. I'm going to take where I'm starting at. Put this in here. And then I'll put my ending for my next leg. Okay, and I know I have one more stop after this one, so I'm going to go ahead and just add that split trip in here as well.
And then we're going to go to the border crossing at I-15, the Arizona border. Once I have all my legs of my split trip in here, I'll click route and let the system route. Something to keep in mind when you are doing split trips for the state of Nevada. You can do multiple split trips as long as you are hauling the same piece of equipment. You are not allowed to drop off your equipment and pick up something new within the same permit. If you leave the state of Nevada, you will have to get a new permit to come back in um, and it is not a split trip is then not allowed. So I can't come into California and then get a split trip coming back out of California. I can't bring a dozer and drop it off at the loading yard and pick up an excavator and then take that somewhere else on the same permit. Those both require um, different permits. But if you're hauling the same piece of equipment, say you're doing a show going clear across Nevada, you can do a split trip from the border when you're coming in to the first lay down yard to the next lay down yard, et cetera, et cetera as long as you do not leave the state lines. Okay, so for this one, say I want to come up to uh, St. Rose and Henderson, and then I know from there, I wanna use the city streets. So I'm gonna add via points in here. Well, my first via point, I'm gonna bring up, and it's doing this weird thing, like that's not what I want the route to do couple things you can look at is first off because this is from my first origin I know this is my first leg of the trip the original leg of the trip so I probably put that via point wrong and here I did you can always check where your via points are because they'll be listed within the respective split under the trip option entry options so I don't want this one to take city streets I want leg two to take city streets. So I'm gonna click up here. And let's go, there we go. And then drag it over to whatever road I want to go. Um, if I know I have to come up here and then turn on Serene, I don't necessarily have to put a viewpoint on Serene Avenue because when I bring my be a point over here the system's going to be like well I have to turn and it knows so you don't have to put a via point on every road um, just use them and pull them around the map until you get the route that you're expecting okay so this one's being weird I'm just going to zoom in your zoom level can have an effect on it and pull it up and then that takes that corner for me how I'd expect. Okay. Since these are on the second leg of the trip, all of those via points are displaying under, it's split one in this entry, but it is split the second leg. You have your original, which is your first leg, split one is your second leg, and then split two is your third leg. Okay, so I get that to my destination and then we want to pull the destination up this way. You can do that. You can see here it gave me balloon point number one. Down here, this is balloon point number three. That's because you have separate via points within the different legs. So the system does know that you have um, multiple via points in the multiple trips. Um, Angie, there is a question in the chat. You might want to um, address that one. Okay. And Angie, if you're talking, we can't hear you. No, I was actually just going to type the answer, but <laughs> oh, hey, that works too. <laughs> I was responding by typing it. <laughs> yeah, oh. I didn't want to disrupt what you're doing. Um, so fine. on on the split trips, 
um, yeah, you can do that as long as the piece that is actually oversized. Um, but you couldn't be overweight if you were hauling um, a piece of equipment that was heavy and then miscellaneous legal freight. Um, you'd have to be legal weight on that. But yes, if you were dropping, so um, so like if you're hauling multiple trusses and you have multiple locations that you have to drop, I just wouldn't put that you're hauling 10 trusses. I would just say that you're hauling trusses. So that way you can stop at one location, drop two or three, move on to the next location, drop two or three. Same thing with like tires. If you're going from one mine to another, um, uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't have a problem if it's legal pieces uh, that you're removing at a location and then continuing on as long as the piece that is oversized doesn't change. Awesome. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> okay, so this last permit, it's actually just a blank permit. If you guys had any kinds of um, wanted more in depth review over any of these location type entries or if um, there's just anything that I could go over more if you have an address that you have issues with anything like that or any questions at this point we'll go ahead and look at all of that and I did want to add um, as far as the lot and long goes um, if you're having to use the lot and long because an address isn't populating uh, we do ask that in the permit notes section, if you can like write a note to us saying that you're delivering it to this address, but it's not populating so that we can find out why it's not populating. And if we need to, we can get it added to the system. I know that we do have some newer housing developments or businesses that are being built that might have an address, but in Google, they don't exist yet. The roads are still dirt that lead to it. So therefore it won't be in our routing system. Uh, but if we can get them on our radar to where there's new developments, then we can we can definitely get them added so that in the future, when you go to that address, then maybe it will populate the address. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to reiterate that if you are having to use the Latin longs, we're gonna look for notes. Um, and if we don't see any notes, and it comes across as a Latin long and we can scroll in and see that either an intersection or an address could have been used and we will reject the permit um, and ask you to use an intersection or a Latin long. And same thing with the intersection. If for some reason one of the roads isn't populating and it's saying that it can't find the intersection, if you can just leave us a note so that we can do some testing on our side and see if um, there's an issue with something not populating when it should, um, that way we can uh, update our system and make sure that you know we continue to go forward with with getting the most accurate data in the system. Hey, one other thing I wanted to show you is if there are informational restrictions it's not going to show green on the map but it will display above well, within the route description so for this one if you're over 16 foot tall going through henderson it's going to give you this um henderson restriction that you need to call these this number um and this is just informational text so it, you're only going to see it here and you will also see it on the next page which is your permit instructions. Here you'll see the restriction information plus any other instructions that the permits, permits office has to um, want you to have. So that's something to keep in mind too when you're scrolling. If you see text here, that's because there is some kind of restriction in place and you need to be aware of it. Okay. Angie, is there anything else I can go over? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, hold on. What if you are delivering a load to a non-physical address and you're not able to give an address? So if it's out in the middle of nowhere, um, and you know, when we scroll in on the map and we can see that it's literally out in the middle of nowhere, I will absolutely accept a Latin long. Um, 
if you're delivering in Las Vegas, uh, in the heart of Las Vegas, and there's obviously an address that it's going to, then we won't accept it. Um, but if it's going out on State Route 376, where there's not much, um, then we won't, we'll, we'll totally accept the Latin long. So when we see one that comes across that has Latin long chosen as either the origin or the destination, uh, the first thing that I do is I scroll in and I look at that area and see, um, is it a new housing development? Um, is it on a dirt road? Because dirt roads aren't in the system. Um, or, you know, is it out in the middle of nowhere where there is nothing? Um, if it's out in the middle of nowhere, but there's a mine, then we'll reject it until you, you need to put the mine in there and use the mine feature instead of using a lot long. Um, but yes, if um, if there is absolutely no address, then I will accept a Latin long. It's kind of the last resort. Anybody else have any questions? Anything that we've missed that you're having issues with? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question that you want to ask and not put it in the chat. And keep in mind too, if hey, you're I have having... a question for you. Oh, sure. So there's a, on your system, there's a copy for me. Yes. And so when you first opened the system up, you know, several months ago now, I started using that because it was easier. I didn't have to put all the, the stuff in there. So I would change the height and the width of my load. And then I would try to use the actual spacings and I'd go through all of it, make sure everything was the same. And, uh, but then when I submit it to you guys, you kick it back to me and say, hey, you, you can't put any actual spacings in it. Was yes, that so is a problem. That. That's an issue that we currently know oh. about, and it's um, on our list of things that we need to get fixed. So we're definitely aware. Okay, I don't about... know why it's doing that. Chaz, have you guys been able to look into that at all? Yeah, we've we've done uh, quite extensive testing on it, trying to duplicate it in our lower environments. Um, it, we haven't had any luck so far. Um, we're, we're still trying to get to the root cause of it, uh, but it is a known issue. Our team is still investigating it, uh, trying to replicate it. Um, and if you want, if you come across it again, we're, we're more than happy to like hop on a screen share or something because, uh, you know, we want, we want to figure out what we're doing too because uh, we're, we're testing it. We can't duplicate it. Uh, so yeah, if, if you come across that again, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, and we'll we'll try to pin down where where that issue is and get to the root cause of it. All right, and then also there's a SIG configurations for certain equipment with all the wheel spacings and whatnot. And I had several of those saved, and then last night I was ordering some permits, and they were all gone. And so I'm, is that not working now, or should we put more on, back in it, or? Chaz, when they save the configurations, is it saving it to that specific unit or is it saving it just to the company? It's saving it to that uh, specific unit. So if there's just a power unit uh, and not a trailer, it's just saving it to that power unit. Uh, if it's for the power unit and trailer, it's saving it for that specific power unit and trailer uh, together. So if you if you save them, then you would have to select that specific power unit in order for them to repopulate for you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Great questions. Um, OK, so a couple more questions. Um, amend online. Uh, so no, not currently. Don't we don't have any plans for um, allowing customers to amend? So we will not amend our annual permits, our five day trip permits. We will allow amends as long as it's the same day the permit was issued. 
So if you order a permit today, you have up until we leave at five o'clock today to call and get a permit amended at no cost. Um, if you order it today, we issue it today, uh, you call tomorrow, it would be a new permit. Um, we don't have any plans right now to um, put an amend button out there for customers to use to amend their own permits. Um, all right, next one. Uh, we can, I mean, if there's specific training, um, so we did training on Tuesday for this route stuff, um, and then today, um, if there's specific training that you would like to see on, you know, maybe on ordering annual permits or um, entering in axle spacings or what, I mean, if there's something specific that you would like, we can absolutely put a training together. Um, and these training sessions will be available on the login screen probably next week so that anybody can view them. Uh, and I'm, if we wanted to do something specific, we can definitely put another training session together and we would do the same thing. We would post the video when we're done. Um, and then uh, max weights, we already do that. So the, the weights that you see when you're ordering a permit are the maxed out weights. Um, that is all the weight that we give. We built when we built this system, we built it to where it would max out all of the weights. So as you're entering in your axle spacings, there is um hold on, I'll let them catch up here. Get to the mm -hmm. get to a weight screen. Oh. oh. Hang on, I think I had it as a calling and not telling. You, no, so, you had, you didn't mark the or, lo uh, load is overweight. There we go. So when you put in all of your information here, you can actually choose um, display configuration and weight. There's that button that's right there. So as you're entering all the information in the tire sizes, the axle widths, the axle spacings, this will, um, it will display and it will show you the weights that you're going to get um, for your groupings. And our um, Tritum bonus weights are built in based off the rules and regulations for Tritum bonus weights. So that's all built in. In our old system, you would submit it it would give you the low basic purple weight. And then if you qualified for the tritums, we would override it and add that weight. But when we built this system, we built it to where it did all of that. So the weight that you see as you're entering in all of your spacings is the actual weight. It's, it's the heaviest weight that we can give um, based off of the information that you've provided, based off of your tire size, your axle spacings, the number of tires, all of that is is completely maxed out already. If you would uh, toggle to the tire size drop down again, um, I think I ran into this problem once before. There's no 255 on that list. Okay, so if you come across one that is not on the list, if you can just let us know because we can get it added to the list. Yeah, that's why I'm so bringing it, it up now. It right. Needs to be so, added. is a two? What is a two fifty five? Is it a ten inch tire? Is um, it a nine inch tire? Because we don't want to have 10. like. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess ten would be roughly. Okay. So yeah, I can get the two fifty five added. Um, we just, I mean, there, there's, there could be a very, very long list. So we tried to go with the basic ones. Um, so where you weren't seeing like five different nine inch tires. Um, so we kind of went with the basic, but if it's one that somebody is using quite often, I have absolutely no problem with reaching out and getting them to add it to the list. So yeah, I will work on getting that added on. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, are there any other questions, suggestions, items you've seen within the routing system that you need help with? Okay. 
Uh, hi, one question. Yes. Okay. Actually, I'm the first time in this uh, meeting. I'm really interested to uh, how can I find out these videos? Uh, the videos will be posted on the uh, login page uh, in the helpful link section. Um, there's a user tutorial videos. I think that's the name of the link. Um, we're going to take these recordings. We upload it to our, our YouTube page, and then we'll post the, the YouTube link um, in, the, in that section. And that'll be probably sometime next week, hopefully early next week, we can get that added on there. OK, you say in the YouTube, right? Uh, yes, it's on our. Uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel, and we'll have the link that will direct us uh, a direct link to our YouTube uh, channel on that on that page. Okay, and what is going to be the name of YouTube channel? All you want, all you have to do is just go to the login screen. So the screen that you first come on, she's showing you right now. So this login screen under the helpful links, it says uh, uh -huh. user tutorial videos, and you'll be able to click on that, and then it'll have a list of the different videos, and then you can click which one you want to view. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, do we have any other questions? Was there more training that anybody wanted to see in the future on anything specific? Okay, I mean, mm -hmm. if there's something that comes up, uh, yes. If there's something that comes up that that you know um, anybody would like training on, if it's something specific, we can always um, we can always do a private meeting too. Uh, we could do a Teams meeting um, and go over something very specific if you wanted. If it was you know on annuals, if you just reach out to the office here and let us know, um, we can definitely move forward with some future training. Absolutely. And if you have any trouble with the, the route page at all, getting a route or anything, uh, like Angie said, reach out to the permit office and um, we can set up some one on one training as well with our GIS team um, here at ProMiles or um, we're, we're here to assist as well and here as an extra resource. So if you have any issues, uh, any problems that you're running into in the system, uh, reach out to Angie, somebody in the permit office um, and they'll, they can reach out to us. Thank you all so much for, for joining this afternoon. Um, we appreciate it. And like I said, um, hopefully next week, early next week, we'll have those uh, the trainings up on the, the login page on the system in the user tutorial videos section. All right, y'all. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, if you all need anything, reach out. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a great afternoon. You too. Bye-bye.